Stay tuned for the biggest fish, the hottest bites, this week here on In-Depth Outdoors with James Holst. Look at that. Wow, is that an incredible fish? And the rest of the IDO fishing team. We're headed to the best fisheries across the upper Midwest and Canada. We'll fish longer, explore unfished bodies of water, and go further off the beaten path in search of the hottest bites in fresh water. <laughs> With Cal Schweel. What a specimen. And Joel Nelson. Whoa, this is an absolute monster. <laughs> This is In-Depth Outdoors. Good morning, everyone. On today's episode of In-Depth Outdoors, we've traded in the Skeeter boat for a set of wading boots. And the reason we're doing that is I've always wanted to do a wading show where we could show people that although it's wonderful to have access to that great big Skeeter to take us to fantastically remote destinations, it doesn't take a lot of gear to be successful here in the spring in the upper Midwest. Uh, we're gonna be fishing the tributaries that flow into Green Bay. And in this area of the world, there is a fishable walleye river about every 20 miles as you work north of Green Bay up the shore towards Escanaba, Michigan. And what's great about this location is not only the numbers of fish that are available, but also the trophy potential. So it's at this time of year where a guy just doesn't need a lot of gear to be very successful. So stick around, it's gonna be Jordan Millette and I today on In-Depth Outdoors. All right, one of the biggest challenges for me is going to uh, be surviving without all the gear I normally take. Today it's one little tiny Plano box and uh, two rods, but I think I'll be okay. So what we gotta do now is, uh, Jordan made this an adventure, so to speak. Uh, he said, uh, pull into the parking lot here and head downstream. And he said, just keep walking uh, until you come to the first bridge. He goes, if you go past the first bridge, you've gone too far. So he's down there fishing somewhere. So uh, I'm gonna trek through the woods and see if I can't find him. I appreciate the holler. Pretty easy to miss a guy in this stuff. So how's the fishing? Pretty good. It's been pretty good lately. Nothing yet this morning, but just getting started. Just took my first couple casts. All right. So here's the tackle box of a guy fishing on these rivers. It's really simple. Basically, we've got an assortment of stick baits, bright colors, a few natural finishes. I've got three jig colors and a pocket full of B-Fish and Tackle Plastics. A guy just doesn't need much to be successful out here. Uh, knowing what I know about river walleyes in the spring, I'm probably gonna start out real subtle in the morning. Uh, as the water temperatures pick up, they always seem to get more aggressive. That's when the cranks will probably kick in. Uh, so we're gonna start this morning, I'm gonna fish some plastics. So to do that, I'll probably start with a quarter ounce jig. That is a uh, VMC Moon Eye jig. And I'm gonna rig it on some uh, B-Fish and Tackle Plastic. So nothing more simple than that. Quarter ounce jig head, bright plastics. Uh, the river here has got that uh, tea stain to it. Whenever I run into tea stained water, chartreuse orange core usually gets the nod. And I brought two rods today just because I always like having an option, but really all you need is one. Uh, most of the guys you see down here on the river are really only gonna be carrying one rod. Just means you gotta retie a little bit if you wanna change presentations, which is no big deal. All right, ready to rock. There we go. All right. Uh, he very big. Oh. <laughs> yeah, nice little male here, I bet. It's awful nice of you to uh, wait to catch fish for us to get here. <laughs> so is it just a little bit deeper at, right before the bridge there? Yeah, it seems to be a nice little pool that they kind of stack up in here. And I like it. Just a little male. We'll definitely get bigger fish than that. But I'll take it. Cool little start. Fishing a quarter ounce moon eye jig and a uh, chartreuse orange core paddle tail pulsar from Be Fish and Tackle. See you later, buddy. Back in action. Jordan, this is good stuff, Fair man. Enough. You got another one? Yep. 
Little boy walleye? Yeah, it feels like a smaller one. How long have you been fishing these rivers like this? I mean, you're not an old guy by any means, but. Well, I started with my friends uh, probably four or five years ago. Okay. Just coming up here after ice out and staying busy. Another little male. This is the perfect solution for guys that don't have their, uh, or gals, that don't have their boats out of storage yet, which is most people, you know? Right. It's a good way to do things differently, too, instead of yep. the troll bite and going out in a boat. Well, there's just nothing it's to worry change about. change the pace. You don't, I, you know, I forget how much information that you're taking in and all the decisions you're making when you're running a big boat, you know? Right. Which, you know, I love doing it. It's fantastic, but. Yeah, both, <laughs> both ways are fun. This is relaxing. There is I gotta get down closer to you, man. You are just putting the grease to them. <laughs> Come on. There's like a little stump little, over here. A little flat plateau. And then it just drops off from there. They are taking it down. <laughs> oh yeah. And that's the thing with these plastics. They just, they think it's as real as real gets. Just woof it. Nice I love it now. when they chase the, the crankbaits, but you know, they have to be pretty aggressive to do that. Right. My guess is this afternoon, once the water temperatures warm up a couple degrees, then you'll right, start sure. seeing those really being the deal. Nearly 70 years ago, a simple idea was taking form in the heart of the ice belt. That idea was, if you combined a commitment to quality with a passion for the sport of ice fishing, you could build a better ice auger. From that idea, Strike Master was born Forever committed to innovation in the quest to build a lighter, more durable auger. Strike Master. Powerful. Durable. Reliable. The WX2060 and the MX2040 from Skeeter Boats. Loaded with a long list of standard features anglers want at an unbeatable price. Including a Yamaha VMAX SHO250 horsepower outboard. Yamaha T9.9 .9 kicker with remote controls. Lowrance HDS12 Gen 3 touch at the dash. And a Minn Kota 112 Ultera on the bow. The WX2060 priced at 61495 The new MX2040 priced at 6495 More comfort, more standard features. When you move up to a WX2060 or MX2040, you get more of everything. VMC's dominating line of panfish baits just got even better. With the introduction of new baits molded from high-density tungsten, the Miracle Metal that offers the same weight as traditional lead at half the size. The platoon of new baits include the Tungsten Fly, fast-thinking VMC Nymph and Waxtail Soft Baits pre-rigged on VMC Tungsten Jigs, and the innovative Tungsten Chandelier Jig that targets roaming panfish like a fish-seeking missile. The next time you hit the ice, tie on a tungsten, and you'll be fishing fast and taking names with VMC. Oh, got that one at your feet. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Ooh, come back here. All right. That's the first one that I've caught like that, that far inside that currency. Yeah. I mean, he was in what amounts to slack water. I know. There you go. See you later, dude. There it goes. Not the biggest fish of the day, Jordan, by any means. <laughs> you need uh, another jig head? No, I got one. All right, so here's what we're fishing. I've got a four inch bee fishing tackle moxie. That's chartreuse orange core. 
and I tried fishing them on jigs, and all I was doing was just donating. I mean, these small rivers are just chock full loaded with timber that's fallen down and kind of drifted in, silted into the bottom, so just wasn't going anywhere with that. And I got to thinking, what could I do to keep from snagging up those baits? So I pulled out a number six offset worm hook, just like the bass guys would use in the summer. That's a one quarter ounce needle sinker, uh, and I just haven't been snagged yet. So it's just a great solution to kind of a problem that just isn't gonna get solved fishing a jig. So far, completely snag free. That didn't oh, take long. I took that one right off from underneath you. I should feel bad. He's back. But I don't. <laughs> <laughs> Come here, fish. Oh, that's good stuff. Oh, yeah. Nice head shakes. I switched colors on you. Did you? Yeah. Firecracker chartreuse tail. Oh. First cast. No, that's not true. It was my second cast. Yeah, oh, that's yeah. a nice fish. Beautiful. Hello. I think it's a big male. You're not going anywhere yet. Come here. <clears throat> here we go. All right. That is a nice big male. My guess is that fish is gonna be ready to do some good work. All right. Here we go, fish. See you later. <laughs> That's too much fun. I just love it when they smack those baits. I switched over to a uh, firecracker chartreuse moxie. Just thinking maybe some of this sunlight could make that uh, sparkle in that body dance. Second cast. Still using that just ridiculous Texas rig. This little spot that I'm throwing to has just got an absolute wood pile just inside the current seam. And that's where we're getting these fish, but man, you throw a jig in there and it is all over. Perfect drift. Boom. <laughs> we haven't tied into any pigs yet, buddy, but we sure have caught a lot of fish. Yeah, the numbers are there. There we go. All right, here we go. He's coming your way, Jordan. Nice. <laughs> what I'm counting on is these fish will get more and more aggressive as we get deeper into the afternoon. It just always seems to work that way on these spring trips. The morning's always the slowest, and then by the time you get into that uh, last hour a day, water's as warm as it's gonna be for the day. That's when the fish really do their, uh, their, their best feeding. Got him. There we go. <laughs> uh, I got to watch the shock boat do some work here. Just hauling out pigs across the river there. Fish are still biting on this side of the river though. Come here. It's been kind of fun watching that shock boat work over there. Of course, it reminds us at how not good we are at this fishing thing because they are releasing some giant fish over there. So the, uh, the potential's there to put some huge fish in the net if we can get one of those big girls to bite because they're definitely here. You know what, this is definitely a male. You can see this is, he's actually starting to melt now. Uh, he's the only male so far today that I've seen actually do that. Definitely ready for a release. I'll let that one go. All right. See you later, bud. Goodbye. <laughs> That's too cool. I'm going to get back at it. At Markham, we know being the leader in ice sonar performance doesn't mean we get to rest on our laurels. Introducing the new iSeries line of flashers. Every model in our new iSeries line combines a bright and vivid display with Markham's advanced sonar technology to produce flasher sonar units that offer a larger display and increased viewing angles without compromising Markham's legendary sonar performance. This winter, don't settle for anything less than an iSeries flasher from Markham, the most powerful high-performance flasher sonar units ever built.
VMC's dominating line of panfish baits just got even better. With the introduction of new baits molded from high-density tungsten, the Miracle Metal that offers the same weight as traditional lead at half the size. The platoon of new baits include the Tungsten Fly, fast-sinking VMC Nymph and Waxtail soft baits pre-rigged on VMC tungsten jigs, and the innovative Tungsten Chandelier Jig that targets roaming panfish like a fish-seeking missile. The next time you hit the ice, tie on a tungsten, and you'll be fishing fast and taking names with VMC. From the first time you pick up a tuned up custom rod, you'll know you're holding something special. A rod not mass produced, but built one at a time by the hands of gifted craftsmen. Rods like the Precision, ice fishing's most versatile multi-species rod, or the Precision Noodle with a tip so sensitive you'll never fish a spring bobber again. And the Commander, the rod that's never met a big fish it couldn't best. Tuned up custom rods. Ice rods handcrafted for you and the way you fish. There he is. <laughs> Let that jig, that plastic I should say, there's no jig out there. Uh, fishing it on that uh, Texas rig still. Let it sweep all the way underneath this tree before that fish hit. Hello, Mr. Walleye. I want the Mrs. Walleye. But like I said, I would imagine the fishing's gonna get a lot better if we get a little bit less light here on the water. Amazing water clarity right now. Bye-bye. See you later, fish. Messed up my plastic a little, but uh, other than that, this is working pretty good. You know, we could be real mobile, run up and down the river here, but we're catching fish every, you know, 10, 15 minutes. So kind of takes away some of the desire to run around and do some exploring. You know, one of the things I really enjoy about uh, getting to run around all over the Midwest and fish all over the place is meeting guys like Jordan. This last winter, we bumped into him Never met him, didn't know anything about him. Ran into him out on the ice on uh, Bay the Knock and just started to have a conversation with the guy. And one of the things that uh, he keeps telling me he really enjoys doing is fishing for these walleyes up in the streams, waiting like this. And I haven't done it for a long, long time. So he didn't have to ask me twice if I wanted to come over and give this a go. I get concerned that we're giving everybody the impression that you know, you have to have sixty, eighty thousand dollars in boat and equipment to be successful as a walleye fisherman. It's just not the case. You can make it as complicated or as simple as you want it to be. And this right here is about as simple as it gets. Foot power, one rod. I think I've got a grand total of six or eight crankbaits with me and three colors of plastics. Oh, that's a good fish, good fish. Awesome. Come here now. Oh yeah, definitely a better fish. Oh yeah. Maybe a female. Look at this. You got him? Yeah, I think so. Okay. The way it hit, it should not get loose. Wow, there he is. Come here. Yeah, there All we right. go. Cool. <laughs> it's a chunker there. Yeah, it is. Awesome. We're climbing the size ladder here <laughs> just a little bit. Man, that is fun. A 12, 13 pounder thrashing around at your feet, that would be, uh, that'd be a load. I think <laughs> I'd drag that one to shore. All right, better fish there. Absolutely just crush the bait. We'll let her go. She's got some business to attend to. See you later. I'm gonna make her earn it. There she goes. All right, super cool. Yes, <laughs> gotta set the hook around the tree branch. <laughs> oh, this reminds me of fishing trout streams as a kid. I'm telling you, I don't mind fishing crankbaits in a river like this. Whatever it takes to catch a fish, I'm good with. But uh, not having to worry about losing crankbaits to the tree branches is, is fine by me. And this little Texas rig, 
the little T-Reg that the bass guys use is working really good. Smaller male. Man, did he crush it. Come here, you. There we go. Just a little guy. And you know, these, these rivers over here on the western shore that roll into Green Bay, such trophy potential. But you are gonna catch a lot of fish like this too. And when they hit it that hard, I really don't care how big they are, it's just a ton of fun. So, here we go. Second fish in about three minutes. And I'm catching them on plastics, which is all right by me. We are by no means alone out here on this river. Uh, there's guys spread along the entire length of it. You get a day like this in March where it's, you know, 53 degrees. It's a lot of fun to be out here wading around. And as the, uh, the light levels drop, I would imagine our chances of sticking a big fish will only go up. Because like I said, we've got great water visibility right now. Almost surprisingly so. I mean, normally you'd fish these rivers in the spring and expect the water clarity to be pretty poor, but I mean, it's really, really good. Nice thing about that is these fish can see the baits from a long ways off. And when they've got good visibility like that, when they can come, come from a distance, they, uh, they hit it and they're moving pretty fast. So it's a very strong strike. It feels like an impact more than just a walleye just, you know, grabbing something. That makes it even more fun. This winter, set a trap for your next trophy with iFish Pro. Ideal for all species, iFish Pro is an innovative fishing system that allows an angler to use their favorite rod and reel instead of trying to manage the fish hand over hand. Oh, right Complete your ice fishing arsenal with iFish Pro, tactical ice gear that puts the fight back into tip-up fishing. Look at that. Find iFish Pro online at iFishPro.com or at your favorite sporting goods retailer. Everything you'd expect from a premium quality fish house and so much more. Glacier combines superior craftsmanship and premium quality materials to produce a comfortable and enjoyable mobile base camp for your next outdoor adventure. Available in a variety of models, a Glacier Ice House offers more standard features, more usable space, and a better fit and finish than the competition. Visit our website at GlacierIceHouse.com to find a dealer near you and see why a Glacier Fish House is the ultimate way to play. Nearly 70 years ago, a simple idea was taking form in the heart of the ice belt. That idea was, if you combined a commitment to quality with a passion for the sport of ice fishing, you could build a better ice auger. From that idea, StrikeMaster was born. Forever committed to innovation in the quest to build a lighter, more durable auger. StrikeMaster, powerful, durable, reliable. So that's what the whole setup looks like. That's just a one ot offset worm hook by VMC, you know, quarter ounce bullet weight. It just slips through all that timber and nonsense down there so much better than a plain jig does. So throw a moxie back on there. One of my favorite spring river baits by far. And one of the things I love about it is it comes in good walleye colors, but uh, even more than that is there's just not a lot of plastics that have a lot of tail action when fished really slowly. And that's really important when you're fishing these walleyes in cold water. And they're just not willing to tack a bait that's moving very fast. And uh, what ends up happening is when you have a bait that doesn't have a lot of tail movement, when you fish it really slow, anglers are almost forced to retrieve that bait a lot faster than they would if they were fishing a bait with a really good tail to it. So uh, I find these moxies are just a fantastic bait to use in the spring. Uh, just let the current do the work. More than anything, if you watch the way I fish this bait, cast it almost straight out away from me, close the bale and just lift the rod. I'm not really doing any pumping or sweeping or even retrieving of line. I'm just letting that weight float uh, downstream of me a little bit. And as the current rushes by, that tail, it's doing all the movement, it's doing all the work for me. So it doesn't take much to convince these walleyes to just dart out and grab a bait that's got that much movement when moving that slowly in the water. There you go. That's yeah, a nice feel nice there. Yeah. You need a uh, 
hook out? Can you, you good? pop that hook out? Or? I think I could, absolutely. Pretty cool. Barely hooked, to be honest with you. Yeah. So what you're saying is the fish are down here? Yeah, they kind of seem to be stacked up in that pool right now. I've had a few bites over there. Just going with this Beautiful fish. Let's take about uh, 10 more of those. There he is. I'm just making a living under the corner of that tree. <laughs> Where I want to be is basically on the other side of the tree, so just let the water do all the work. You just kind of throw it out and let it sweep up underneath. Ah. Still a male. I thought he was going to be uh, probably, you know, quite a bit bigger than that. Turns out uh, he's pretty close to that 15, 16 inches as well. Whoop! There you go. Gone. He ran right into my boot. <laughs> there we go. Feels like a better one. Came up and ate that plastic. She's in a green. Pop the hook out of them. That's probably one of our biggest all day. Nice fish. Got him. They're everywhere. <laughs> no, he's not huge. No. Not as nice as the one you just had. But I'll take him. He's the, he's the male to go with uh, that female you just released. Go. Nice fish. But not what we're after. I want one of those just like Jordan had. You know what, Jordan? Three and a half millimeter waders are not sufficient <laughs> for this. If I just start babbling and not making sense anymore, it's because I'm hypothermic. <laughs> yeah, I think we can just call it a day. We're running out of places to fish with the afternoon crowd rolling in and, you know, we've caught tons of fish. That's so, a good day. Uh, I've learned a few things today. I've learned the bite over here is awesome. I've learned that uh, three and a half millimeter neoprene waders are not enough <laughs> to spend the entire day in water at this temperature. I agree. And uh, had a great time fishing with it. Yeah, it's been awesome. Hope to do it again. So, Absolutely. you know, for anybody watching, um, if you're just thinking about uh, walleye opener or you just haven't got that boat out of storage yet. What are you waiting for? There's just tons of opportunities over here in Western Wisconsin where even if that boat's not ready to go yet, all you need is just a pair of waders and a spinning rod like this to get into some just incredible walleye action. So uh, give it a thought. And so from uh, Jordan and I, thanks for watching. We'll see you next week. For more info on the latest fish reports, gear recommendations, and hottest techniques, connect with us online at indepthoutdoors.com or follow us on Facebook at Indepth Outdoors. And if you enjoyed today's show, be sure to let our sponsors know.